What does it mean to get good? Although this question may look to have a simple answer on the surface, look beyond and you will see so many factors that wouldn't have been taken into consideration if you had not dug deeper. I say this because of my old How to Fight Every Class as Scout video. The video is littered with the same flaws all of my older videos have, the main one being that I just don't explain my points well enough. <coughs> Scout's primary problem. <coughs> But one of these things that I don't explain well is how to actually get good at scout. Now I briefly mention that what I mean when I say to get good is that you need to get good at both aiming and dodging. But as I reflect on that video I'm realizing that there is so much more than just having good aim. Too much that there was no way I was ever going to fit it into that video so I'm just gonna call this video a very 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 late follow-up to the how to fight every class video better late than ever so this is how to get good at scout scout has the amazing ability to pick nearly any fight he gets into which I would argue no other class has even if you look at someone like Soldier, yeah he can rocket jump away from a fight but sometimes he just does not have the health to both survive the rocket jump away and also the fall damage taken when landing. <laughs> Scout's ability to look at something like this and say, nah you're, nah you're, yeah you're grand actually, thank, same boy. It's probably one of the biggest upsides of the class, so you need to use it. The first way of doing this is by looking at the class you're about to fight. So let me set you an example. This is Madame Hexus. Now since she's a filthy pyromane you want to stay as far away as possible from her. Just like in real life. Now look at where she's located. Do you think that this is the best possible place to start a fight with a pyro who is completely aware of you and for all you know at full health? No, you will be fucking flame grilled. It is much better to leave the area into a much more open and spacious area and then engage the pyro in a fight. Here is another example. This is Stupid Wizard. He's a soldier main. And because he's a soldier main you want to show superiority over him because you are above him. Literally. So in this situation, do you think it's good to engage a fight with this soldier? Yes, absolutely. Because you have the high ground. It forces soldier to hit a direct hit on you because he is nowhere to splash his rockets. If it were the other way around, however, you would end up like a car in Belfast. Knowing each of the factors needed to engage each class is probably the most crucial thing about getting good as scout. I'm not going to talk about all of them here because I've already talked about them in the previous video so you can go back and watch that. But even if you know how to position yourself in a fight, knowing when to actually take the fight before it even starts, that's the first thing that's going to make you improve as scout. The only exceptions to this rule is 1 if the enemy is completely unaware of you and 2 if you've seen that the enemy is already badly damaged. Knowing your map layout is probably on the same level of importance as knowing how to pick your fights. Having a mental note of ways to escape a situation or manoeuvre around during a fight is crucial to your deathmatch skills. Now, as opposed to learning when to pick your fights, knowing your map layout can only really be done through experience. You can examine, study, comb all the maps you haven't played, you fucking nerd. But when it comes to having an actual fight on the actual map you will get so disoriented so quickly. You'll try to jump on this thing that doesn't have collision or have invisible walls blocking them, shit like that. I don't know how many times I've gotten into a fight on a new map I've never played before and I've tried to backpedal during a fight and ended up getting stuck on some stupid fucking map prop. FUCKING MOVE! 
And again, there's no other way around this than just playing the maps. Now, I don't expect you to know every single map inside out, because I don't know them either, okay? But someone who has at least a vague idea of the map boundaries, the props, will have an advantage in a 1v1 over someone who has never played the map before in his life. So, you know, go out and waste all your time on TF2. Fuck your responsibilities, don't do your homework, make a TF2 YouTube channel, disappoint your parents, then you'll finally be good at the game, yay! Yeah, right, lads, quick announcement. So, I am giving away a kilowatt Baker Boy that will be signed by me. It is the exact same hat that I use. It is not my hat, but it is the exact same unusual effect and the exact same hat. Um, it will be signed by me, which will say, you know, uh, gifted by not Sam G down the bottom of the description. Um, there's about like 15 days as I'm recording this left in the uh, giveaway so uh, join the link is in the description it's really easy to join and that's basically it and also subscribe knowing what you're actually going into a fight with is probably gonna be very helpful you might think that this section isn't needed, that, you know, once you point and click, the person goes bye-bye. But it, it's not as simple as that. Yes, clicking on the person does make the bad man go away, but Scout has six primaries and seven secondaries that all do different things, fire differently, reload differently, etc. Before you engage in a fight, you should check to see what way you should approach it based on the actual weapon you have equipped. For example, if you have the stock scatter going, you don't really need to worry about anything because it's stock. It's meant to be well-rounded and good in every situation. If you have the soda popper, you need to keep in mind the slow reload and the short clip. The gun works best for dropping people quickly, so it's best to get close to your enemies and hit two meat shots before you have to reload. If you're using the force of nature, kill yourself. If you're using the short stop, take advantage of the slight extra range that it gives you and back away a bit. When using the babyface blaster, if you get hit, you're going to be even more vulnerable on the next shot because of the boost reduction. So what you want to do is prioritize your dodging. So you're gonna have to harness your MGE skills. MGE, I love MGE. Why do you want me on Spire? I swear I'll let Fuck you. Fuck off! <laughs> Get out of here, Scott. Back to your mother's basement. Sorry about that, but we um we will be returning to MGE shortly. And finally, if you're using the back scatter, you should just treat it like the scatter gun. But if you can try prioritize back shots, and if any of you laugh at that, I will skin you alive. As for the secondaries, I'm not gonna go over them because I've already made a full video about that. So if you want to learn about them, go watch my Scout secondary video. And now on to what the majority of you probably thought this video was about. It's the thing that separates the femme boys from the femme men. It guarantees the victor to get no bitches. It will push the human limits of how many racial slurs someone can read in 10 seconds. It's M G. E. Mahatma Gandhi Expressway. Minor Gambling Enterprise. My Chemical Omans. My Gaming Edge. MG is basically TF2's 1v1 mode. The mode is synonymous with improving your aim and movement, so much so that when people talk about deathmatch skills or 1v1 skills, they will most likely just call it MGE skills. And I joke about the game mode, it's players and deathmatch skills in general, but DM skills are genuinely half the battle. It's just that I felt it necessary to talk about the other elements first, as I barely see them talked about. TF2 doesn't happen in a vacuum lads, okay? You can talk about statistics and best case scenarios all you want, but the truth is that TF2 is a game with 9 different classes, over 53 maps and 12 players on each team. It's not always you and another scout on Void up middle fucking tilling each other's bum hole for 10 minutes. That aside, deathmatch is still incredibly important and is the thing I referred to in my first video when I said get good. But how do you actually go about getting good? Practice. 
I know that seems like a cop-out answer, but that is literally all there is to it. Hop in to MGE with another scout and just do your best. Then, once you're finished, you can break down what exactly needs to be improved. If you seem to be hitting a lot of shots, but you're still dying, you probably need to improve on your movement. Make your movement as completely unpredictable as possible. Go against your muscle memory, as odds are, your muscle memory is what's going to be making you predictable. And for fuck's sake, do not jump in a scout 1v1. When you jump, you are going to be more easily tracked as you can only move in one direction until you either double jump or hit the ground. If you seem to be lasting long in fights but you're missing your shots, fairly simple, you need to work on your aim. And there is no other way about doing that than just keep practicing. Everyone aims differently. I aim in this weird mix of like flicking and also DDR style, which is when you shoot when your enemy passes through your crosshair. Yours might be completely different, I don't know. The point is that there is literally no way to improve other than just keep practicing. Maybe you can improve a bit by changing your sensitivity if you seem to be under or overshooting your shots, but that is it. I guess this video was a bit more informative and less opinionated than my last few videos, but I don't mind. I really just enjoy seeing people improve at anything really. I try to improve on all my hobbies, I try to improve on each video I make, and I hope that this video encourages you to improve at TF2. Just like how TF2 improves on each update by adding 50 more fucking elvats to the game! Oh Valve!